Hello, good afternoon. My name is Jay Kada. My presentation this afternoon is about participatory mapping. And I think the best way to start this presentation is to invite you to participate in this short activity, short energizer. Now it's the afternoon, so I, I'm sure everybody is, uh, is, quite, um, is quite fatigued. So I invite everyone to stand up, please, and find a partner. My colleagues, um, Kat and Misha, will help me to demonstrate this energizer. So this requires a partner. So I want one of you to position your hands uh, facing down and the other one facing up, like this. When I say sw switch, you switch. Okay? Switch, switch, switch. So the game is, when I say slap, you slap the hands of your partner. But the one who will slap are the hands going uh, down or facing down. Okay? So the, but the purpose is for you to avoid that. Okay? So let's do it. Switch. 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 Slap. Okay. One more time. One more time. Switch. 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 Slap. Okay. Thank you very much. Please, uh, please sit down. Thank you for participating. So this participatory mapping activity, we started this, uh, I think, 10 years ago. And we have made much progress since then. We did this in, uh, mostly in the Philippines. But we had this in uh, France, in uh, Indonesia, Nepal, Cambodia, and some other countries. So I'm going to start with uh, this video and explain to you how we do it. So we do this in the community, the map, the scale, or the coverage of this, uh, of this um, activity is uh, community. The background music is uh, an indigenous people song from one of the areas where we did this work. So with the members of the community, okay, let's just watch the video. So the purpose of this is to come up with a three-dimensional map that you see in this video and to provide information that helps us, that could help us in uh, risk assessment or in disaster risk reduction, like hazard information. So those push pins that you see, they represent houses, the colors, the land uses in that area. And these strings, this represents hazard prone areas. And they can identify that on the map because they have the actual experiences of those hazards. And this is a top-down photo of that uh, hazard mapping activity. So in 2015, we started working with UNICEF and some partner communities and um, local government units in uh, some areas in the Philippines, in five sites. And um, the, objecti the objective of our project is to uh, to so improve further this methodology. And we have two, re two, ha two uh, main objectives. One is to engage children in, um, in, uh, in participatory disaster risk reduction through this participatory mapping activity. And I believe we were very successful. I'm very proud of that. Sorry. We were very successful in, um, in, um, in engaging the children. Now, the second one is to ensure that the information and data that we produce in the community are shared in the actors outside the community. And I mean the actors like uh, local government authorities, NGOs, national government agencies. Because we have made these observations that many of this information data that we produce in the community with the local people, this participatory mapping activity, they happen in the community, yes, but they usually stay in the community. They're not usually shared outside the actors, uh, out beyond the borders of the community. So that is the main objective. So we started working with this um, multi-hazard child vulnerability analysis and mapping system. I'm sorry, it's quite complicated. But essentially, it's computer mapping system that will allow us to collect and gather data on inf or information 
that are helpful in disaster risk reduction, as I said, information and hazard, vulnerabilities, capacities, especially those indicators that concern children or that, we, that, that can be used to protect and uh, provide the needs of the children before, during, and after disasters. And the idea is really very simple. So what we have here is a map, it's a GIS or a computer map that we produce usually in the, um, outside the community, at the, the local government offices, the mandated government agencies, we produce these kinds of maps. So what you see here, the lines, they are the political boundaries, uh, then the dots that you see, the points there, these are um, houses and the other, air, the, the, the colored shaded areas, this represents hazards and other information. Now what we want to do, what we want to do is to plot the data on that, G in that computer aided uh, produced maps using the information from the three-dimensional map that we produce in the community. And then I think this is very important because many of this information in the community are very, very specific in the community that local government units or actors outside the community do not have access to this data. So information on types of materials, or, or factors of vulnerabilities that we consider including presence or absence of malnourished children, and the resources, the people that could help us during and after disasters like what we usually plot, the health workers, we can put them on the maps of the actors outside the community. So I, this is how, but th that is a one, it's not, this process or methodology is not a one-way process. So what we have seen, what, we, what, we, what I, what I uh, have shown you is that from the 3D map to the scientific maps, now, what I would like to show you is this landslide map produced by one of, our, one of the mandated government agencies. So this is a landslide map, and the dots in yellow, those are the areas that, ex that are exposed to landslide. So take a look at this. What we did is we transferred this information, this landslide map by the government, to the three-dimensional map in the community. So the strings there that you see, this come from the, these are the areas that are exposed to hazard. But as I said, this is an exchange of knowledge. So you see this um, red cir circle, this area, according to the local people, is an area where they have experienced actual landslide. So this is actual event, but it's not reflected on the map of the government. So we see here that th there are inconsistencies. But I, I think these inconsistencies are also opportunities you know, to talk, to discuss, to exchange, to share knowledge. And they can do that because there is a way for us to, to, uh, to, to collaborate or to, to gather on, on, uh, on a single platform and discuss this exchange or facilitate this exchange of information or knowledge. So the purpose of this... Um, of this computer mapping system that we produce is really to, to, uh, to integrate with the knowledge in the community and vice versa. Because we believe this uh, should be participatory or disaster risk reduction should be participatory. And I think if there is uh, one lesson that I have learned from my mentors in disaster or in, this, or in disaster risk reduction or in this field, that is, uh, no single person or institution or actor has all the knowledge and skills to facilitate effective disaster risk reduction. So logically, we really have to complement our resources and knowledge and skills. But we should not stop at some uh, you know, theoretical or good frameworks. We must provide methodological supports. And this uh, project, prove that that is possible. What I told you about this project is the small picture. Now the big picture is that this project ultimately aims to contribute in co-production and sharing of knowledge. 
what we're doing or what we sh all the efforts, all the activities, all the methods, the methodologies that we produce, that we, uh, that we formulate, that we believe this should be based on this very principle, co-production and sharing of knowledge. What we're doing now here in GPDRR in Cancun is exactly that, co-production and sharing of knowledge. But there are also bigger challenges. I think this is the last slide. In the course of, uh, of this project, we have encountered many challenges, you know, from the computer glitches to um, technical uh, issues uh, to lack of participation in the community to access to materials. Those are challenges that we have faced. But I think we can always solve or provide solutions to those problems or to those challenges if at the first place we are really upholding that very principle, co-production and sharing of knowledge. And I think the bigger challenge does not really rely on, this, uh, on these methodologies or let us say in the actors in the community. But I think this lies on many of, uh, of us, outside actors. I, I think that the people, in the, the people in Cancun now in this uh, Moon Palace, many of these challenges lie on us. You know, I think the biggest challenge or the, biggest, the, bigger, the bigger challenges are the lack of willingness to allow people in the community to really participate in the process. I mean, the sincerity to really do this participation. Because, you know, we are doing this participation or we facilitate this participatory methodology and thus not participating in the process. Or we, you know, we promote ownership, but we maintain that ownership. We believe participation should be about empowerment. So to conclude, I will leave you this, uh, this quotes by uh, Robert Chambers, my favorite, uh, I know our favorite development scholars. Participation by them, people in the community, marginalized sectors, all of us actually, will not be sustainable or strong unless we too are participatory. Ownership by them means non-ownership by us. And empowerment for them means disempowerment for us. Thank you very much.